Morning, Jim. Morning, Danny. Morning, Sam. And morning. 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 morning, mate. Good to have you on. So what do you think? Right, so last season, I was just saying to your producer, man, or whoever he is, uh, <laughs> last season we had 4-2, and we had the upper edge on them in the first leg of the Etihad. Cal Walker was unstoppable, as always. Then we went to the second leg of the Bernabeu, and Pep made some changes and took Cal Walker off, and we were still winning the legs at that time. As soon as he made the changes, took Cal Walker off, and uh, Cal Cole Palmer came on a few others, we lost the game. Yeah, he got he got injured. He didn't take him off tactically. He got injured. I remember what you're talking about. I remember the game. He come off injured. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that I remember that right now. But, I, but all I remember is Cal Walker coming off, and it was like a, it was a big massive thing. Everything else in that that after that or before that point, it was you sort of forget about it until you remember Cal Walker came off. Mm, but okay. As long as Cal Walker stays fit and he keeps him on, we've, we've got this super bad thing. Well, Anthony, so would you leave? Would you, on, Danny, would on. you leave Kyle Walker out against Everton then at the weekend just to make sure he's right no. for Vinicius next week? <laughs> no, I, I, would, I would. I would bring Rico Lewis back home. I would, yeah. I would. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. It's a big hurdle, Anthony. Do they overcome it? Do they get to this final? Yeah, we've got. I think this time we've got the second leg at home. Yeah, we've got it. All right, Anthony, listen, thank you for that. Carry on with your drive. Obviously, it was hands-free, but we could hear him. Uh, interestingly, Danny Barcelona have just confirmed that uh, Sergio Busquets is set to leave the club at the end of the season. It's over hit for him there. I think I, I'm I right think in saying... Four. Someone will tell me if I'm not. I think he's the most decorated footballer ever, isn't he? Is he really? I think he's there. I think it's him. Yeah, three Champions Leagues, uh, eight La Ligas. World Cup, two European champ or two World Cups. Is it one World Cup, two European Championships, or the other way around? Um, it's it's an incredible, incredible. You're career. right. Three FIFA Club World Cups. You're right. It goes on and on. It's a joke. You when you actually break it down to what this guy's won. Yeah. Because people never talk about him when they talk about Iniesta and Xavi. They very rarely mention Busquets. But throughout the decade of their dominance, he was the third musketeer, if you like. Yes. The people don't. He's the one that gets the least plaudits out of three. What do you think? Does he come here? Or is it the desert? All roads lead to Saudi. Yeah, probably. Mm. I don't think it is now. I mean, he's never been the most physical anyway. He's not an athletic footballer. He's a he's a super intelligent technician. Yeah, I think coming to the Premier League that would be hard work for him. I mean, one of one of these clubs. I think it's uh, Al Hilal. Is it? They're, they're talking about teaming up Messi with Busquets and Jordi Alba. So I mean, all of a sudden. It started, hasn't the movement has started out to that part of the world, Danny? Well, as long as he's got his mortgage payments covered, he'd be all right. <laughs> he can go, he can go out there with peace of mind. Then you would think he's okay in that area. <laughs> uh, Jack is a big Manchester City fan. Jack, good morning. Who's got the edge going into the second leg at the Etihad? Then, Jack. Morning, guys. How you doing? All right. Good morning. Good. good to have you on. Good, good, good. First time caller, by the way. So uh, go easy on me. No, you're doing well already. Nice, positive, upbeat <laughs> attitude. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, in terms of the first leg, I'm, I'm happy with that result. Um, we could have quite easily been one or two nil down. You know what Real Madrid are going to burn about and stop at times. Um, in my mind, the first leg going there was always about damage limitation. Um, so, you know, concede one, go in with a draw and then, um, you know, use the home advantage. Yeah. Um, we had, what, 850 fans there yesterday? Um, 1,800. 1,800. 18 of it's, it's crazy compared to the uh, the numbers that the, the home fans had. Mm. Um, so to take that with with the Etihad effect, if you like, um, I, I'm, I'm confident we can. You know, it's, it's, the, it's all down to the first goal, though. Whoever gets the first goal. Uh, do, do, would you like to see Mares? Would you like to see Mares play on the right instead of Bernardo Silva? And the reason I say that, although Bernardo Silva is a wonderful talent, and we know what a brilliant footballer he is, um, and yeah. defensively, you know, he's brilliant as well. He's played midfield a lot the last couple of years, you know. But Camavinga, yeah. who's a super talent, he's a midfielder playing at left back, and I'd like to see yeah. Mark see how he coped with Mares in the home game. Rather, because Bernardo Silva doesn't go past people quite the same way. He's he's clever and he gets past people with his little intricate triangles and stuff. But Mares has got that, you know, the chop and the ability to score. I mean, he was top scorer last season. I think I'm right in saying. Would, would you be having that as well, Jay? Yeah, I would. Mares has that flair, um, it's similar to what you were talking about. It's his his first touch on the ball. It's a work of art, um, and it, it's just his 
footwork with the ball, we, I, I think he would have run circles around Camavinga yesterday. Yeah. Well, I think um, he played Bernardo there because yesterday he thought that Madrid might have a little bit more of the game and Camavinga likes to fly forward. But in it, actually, yeah. the reality was that he got done. When he was the one he that he did the one-two before they got the goal, wasn't it? When he beat, he got past Bernardo Silva. But I think at home, Mares gives you more of a goal threat than Silva. Yeah, Jackie in the I final. Think, do you get to the final, Mick? I think this year we've got as fair a chance as, as we've had any other year. Um, we've got we've got that tooth and nail in the attack that we've been missing every other year. Yeah, uh, we're having you know options like Harland and Alvarez. Um, I'd, depending on how the game goes, I'd even give him a run. Sticking beyond Harlan, see how, see how Alvarez gets on. Okay, Jack, first time caller or not, you did well. Thank you so much for that. Here's Mike. Uh, Mike, good morning, big city fan. What's your take on it, Mike? It's finely balanced, but we probably thought it would be. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I, I think City hold the balance, but I think they'd have a bigger chance now if the referee had done his job and booked Daniel Carvajal and, uh, and Tony Cruz for the uh, assaults that they were doing throughout the game. Um, and the, but the way City play, I can't see any team stopping them uh, at uh, the Etihad anyway. So uh, it's all all, uh, all roads lead to Istanbul, I think. Wow, you think they get the job done there, Mike? Thanks very much indeed. It is perfectly balanced, Simon, isn't mm. it? Perfectly poised. Yeah. And if Manchester City, if Manchester City do show on the night and get to that final, then yeah, I would think they will now win it. If they get to the final, they'll win it. But this is the hurdle. You'd think either, get, either of going through would win it, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I agree. You'd think so on the balance of probability, but they've got a very worthy adversary in Real Madrid. Mm. And this game um, is on a knife edge because Madrid are as capable of, uh, of upsetting the apple cart at the end. They're not going to be bothered about the Etihad. They're not going to be... These players have played no, in no. the biggest games around the world. They're not going to give a... Monkeys yeah. about the Etihad and the fans that turn their back on one the Champions of, League every five minutes. One of the big things is when you draw a game one one, and City is so good at home, it, 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 maybe it might not change the way they go out, but I, I think it will a little bit. You're going to start the game with a little bit of respect and caution for Real Madrid, of course. If you if they were a goal down, City would have just gone hell for leather, mm. and I think it changed the dynamic a bit when it's true. There's that respect there one one. It, I think it will be cagey at the beginning. Yeah, quite a few people have picked up in the conversation we had with Kyle, about Kyle Walker. I mean, he's extraordinarily good, isn't he? He's the best in the world at defending one on one, bar none. No, but anyone can call up and give me it's, nobody. I've never seen anybody cope with Neymar when he played PSG twice, and Mbappe did it recently in the World Cup. And this guy walking at the end of his career, he's done it to Mbappe before. Uh, Vinicius, he copes with him. The only time Vinicius played well, but he he scored his goal from central when he went into central. Kyle had to let him go. You can't follow a man all over the pitch, but his one on one duels with him, mm. no problem. Best by far in that position. I can't think of anyone no. who can cope. With one on one defending like Kyle Walker. Yeah. That oh, is I agree. extraordinary. I yeah. agree. I think I I mean, he doesn't seem to, I mean, at this stage in his career, he doesn't seem to have lost a single inch in his pace. And yeah. also, you could argue at this stage in his career, he's more confident in his own mm, ability than he's aware. ever been. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.